Hi, I'm Mike Allen. I'm an environmental archaeologist helping my colleagues working in this wonderful landscape of Badgenden in the Cotswolds. As an environmental archaeologist, I'm interested in helping them understand the landscape. And we do that through strange tools like this, like an auger. Um, here are two different types of auger, a walking stick auger. Um, and a classic auger because these things help us see into the past by looking at the soils beneath our very feet. The soils and the sediments underneath the ground have a long history and uh, they've been built up through hundreds and thousands of years and by augering through them and identifying them and interpreting them we can start seeing how the landscape has been built, how the landscape has developed over hundreds and thousands of years and help our archaeological colleagues put their settlement sites their burial sites, their ceremonial sites, into the landscape in which they belonged. And after all, it was the landscape that um, people lived off. It was a farmed landscape, and the result of that farming, as a result of deforestation, as a result of arable activity, and a result of pasture, they changed inadvertently and accidentally the whole shape of the landscape. And therefore, we can see contours in the landscape which are hiding secrets of soils and sediments. So, in, fr in fact, here we have an auger. If I just twist this into the ground, we can start seeing literally what's beneath our feet. And by twisting this and pulling out a plug of soil, we can see, to start off with, hundreds, if not thousands, of years of history. So here is an auger core. This is built up by several twists of the auger. We've got the top one and then we've pushed it down further and got the next one and gone down even further. So we're now down nearly half a metre. And this gives us a timeline of perhaps hundreds, if not thousands of years of history. At the top here we have the grass and underneath here we have an earthworm worked horizon. This is stone free and essentially full of earthworm poo. Beneath that we have the stones which were sitting in the soil and now buried. And beneath that we have the topsoil. And as we move down here, going through hundreds of years, this is no longer soil, this is a sediment. This is probably hill wash or colluvium, which has come down the hill as a result of prehistoric, possibly even Iron Age agriculture. So once the area behind me was under fields and farming and it rained, the soil slowly crept down into the valley bottom. And this is what this stuff is. This is hill wash. This is our clue of prehistoric agriculture. So it is not from the stream behind me, but is actually from the hill, hill slope in front of me. And this may be part of our landscape. This material here is telling me this is probably evidence of prehistoric agriculture, the Iron Age and Roman farming of this landscape. And that farming has created the landscape we see today, but this is clues to the prehistory and the past. Okay, so here I am uh, undercover in the rain in our field laboratory and what we're going to be looking at is some of the things which have come out of the soil to try and reconstruct and paint a picture of the landscape in the past. By looking at some of those microscopic and macroscopic elements we can start to reconstruct the landscape, the farming, the arable fields and the pasture from some of these small microscopic elements. They range from soils which are, here is a piece of soil which has been taken from an archaeological site, a buried soil, and by looking at this and examining this, we can say what the soil was, whether it has been tilled, whether it has been arded, whether it has been ploughed, whether there are animals here, whether it has been trampled, and all of that is hidden and buried in little pieces of soil like this. Or other things that we recover from the soil by sieving are th things like land snails. This is the common garden snail. This snail is probably munching your, your vegetables today, but this snail is perhaps the second largest species in the British fauna. Most species are as small as this, and when we see them, they are smashed to smithereens and are perhaps only half a millimetre in size. So why are snails of any interest? Well, because they like living in different parts of the country. Some like living in woodlands, some like living in open woodlands, some like living in long grassland, some like living in short grassland, and some like living in arable landscapes. So by looking at the types of snail, we can reconstruct the type of environment and the type of land use. And the other things which come specifically off the fields are indeed grain. The cultivated grain of prehistoric people, Iron Age people ploughing the fields, cultivating their grain, once they've taken them back to their settlement site, they may get accidentally charred, and therefore they arrive as charcoal and charred pieces of cereal grain and mustard seeds that we can therefore identify and analyse and 
report back to our archaeologists about what they were farming in the fields around us and therefore we can start telling what people were farming, what they were growing in the past in the Iron Age and at Badgenden. One of the things that was particularly of interest is were they growing those crops here in the very fields we can see or were they being bought in and brought in from further afield and we can tell those by looking at the weed seeds and working out precisely what soils were cultivated in the Iron Age. And by putting all of these elements together, the soils, the snails, the seeds and the augering, we can paint a picture of the whole landscape of the Iron Age Opera, of the Roman landscape, and show how the landscape we can see today is actually one of accretion and development and has been built up by farming in the past. So the rain stopped, I'm now back in the landscape with the sun shining and obviously I'm terribly excited about all this scientific material, all those microscopic snails and seeds and soils. But what does that really tell us? What, what does that information do and where, what happens to that information? Well, we publish it in academic books which keep us archaeologists together, but what we do is we draw all that information together, the environmental archaeologists and the archaeologists pull together all that information to tell a story of the landscape, of people in the landscape and of people living off and living in that landscape, farming, living and dying in that landscape. But that information also ends up in museums and ends up in history books and is helping educate everyone about the past. But also the past can tell us about the future. Um, by looking at the soils and sediments, we can see some of the mistakes that people have made in the past and how they've inadvertently eroded some of the soils. And so by looking at their mistakes, we can learn from their mistakes and actually help with today's agriculture and today's farming. So the past can help the future.